In an earlier lecture, we spoke about elastic collisions, and we said that an elastic collision is a collision in which the kinetic energy as well as the momentum of our system of objects is conserved. So now we're going to look at a second type of collision known as an inelastic collision in which the kinetic energy is not conserved because some of that kinetic energy becomes is transformed into other forms of energy. Now, whenever two or more macroscopic objects, objects that are large enough for us to see collide, those collisions are usually to some extent inelastic. So that means some of that initial kinetic energy is conserved, is transformed into other forms of energy. So for example, if we have the following two macroscopic objects, objects A and objects B, that are traveling with some velocities before they collide, they have kinetic energy. Now, what will take place during our inelastic collision is some of that kinetic energy in the macroscopic movement of our two objects will transform into other forms of energy. So one form of energy that will be produced is sound. So sound waves are electromagnetic radiation. It's energy, it's one form of energy. So macroscopic kinetic energy goes into creating sound waves. So that's exactly why when two objects collide, we hear that collision because some of that kinetic energy is transformed into sound waves. Now a second form of transformation takes place and that is known as thermal energy. So kinetic energy is transformed into thermal energy into increasing the internal energy of our two macroscopic objects. Now that basically means that after our collision takes place because some of that initial kinetic energy was transformed into other forms of energy, we're going to have less kinetic energy at the end. So our objects, the total sum of our kinetic energy at the end, will be less than the total sum of the initial kinetic energy of the objects. Now, a second type of inelastic collision is an explosion. So what takes place in an explosion? Well, initially, our object is stationary. It has potential energy. And what happens is some of that potential, uh, potential energy goes into increasing the kinetic energy of that object. So the object explodes. It breaks into different parts. And those parts begin to move with kinetic energy. So potential energy is transformed into kinetic energy. And this is another example of an inelastic collision. Now, what is conserved in our inelastic collisions, as we said earlier, is momentum. So we have the conservation of momentum taking place. So that basically means that the initial sum of the momentum of our two objects is equal to the final sum of our momentum of the objects. So we have the following equation. So another thing that I should mention is a completely inelastic collision. A completely inelastic collision is a collision in which the colliding objects stick together after our collision. So let's look at the following example that deals with a completely inelastic collision. Let's calculate how much kinetic energy is transformed into thermal energy when two railroad cars stick together after one of them collides with the second one that is stationary. So we have two cars, car A and car B. Car A is traveling at 30 meters per second in the positive direction along the x-axis and car B is stationary so it has a velocity of 0 meters per second. Now, the collision takes place and both of these objects move in this direction with some velocity. So they have the same exact velocity because our final system is composed of this combination of these two cars. So VA prime equals VB prime equals the final velocity of our system of cars. So let's suppose the mass of A and the mass of B is 10,000 kilograms. Knowing this information and using this equation, the conservation of momentum we can solve for our final velocity. So, notice we have MB times VB. VB is zero, so this term cancels out. And we're left with 
MA times VA is equal to V prime, our velocity of the system of objects after our completely inelastic collision takes place, multiplied by the sum of the two masses. So we bring this to the left side and we get our final velocity of the two objects is equal to 10,000 times 30 divided by 20,000 equals 15 meters per second. So the final velocity of our two objects is the same exact velocity, 15 meters per second, because we have a completely inelastic collision. The two objects, our car A and car B, stick together and move after our collision takes place. So now, using this information, we can solve for our thermal energy how much kinetic energy was transformed into increasing the internal energy of our two objects. Well, we have the following conservation equation. Remember, even though the total kinetic energy is not conserved, the total energy is conserved. So we have the initial kinetic energy of the object is equal to the final kinetic energy of the object plus thermal energy. So we want to calculate thermal energy. So Ki, the initial kinetic energy, is equal to one-half Ma times Va squared, which is equal to one-half Ma plus Mb, because now we have the two objects that coupled times the velocity prime squared, which we found, plus E, where E represents our thermal energy. So we solve for E, and we get the following value minus this value. So we plug that into our calculator, and we get... 2.25 times 10 to the 6 joules. So this is how much kinetic energy was transformed into increasing the internal energy of our two objects. So this is how much energy went into increasing the individual vibrational velocities of the molecules and atoms compromising our two cars, cars A and cars B.